Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, so my name is Sean Brusso. I uh, coach uh, football at Lancaster High School. It's a large high school outside of Buffalo, New York. Uh, we're entering our fifth season as a staff. Uh, like I said, largest public high school outside of Buffalo. Uh, we're a very tradition-rich community. We had two head coaches from 1961 to 2011. Uh, after that, and coach retired, uh, our program fell on some hard times. Uh, it was, you know, the alumni became distant. The culture of the program went into a bad spot. Uh, our head coach took over in 2016, and we've been 39 and seven ever since. Uh, we won four consecutive sectional titles, which is, you know, our area to get into the state playoffs, uh, where we had two in the previous 36 years before that, um, and we had a state title appearance in 2017. And we pride ourselves on being the premier program in Western New York. And when we say that, it, it's it's kind of like we've fallen into the trap where we're the team that when you get beat, everybody storms the field and uh, we've had that or stomps on your logo if it's at your place. So uh, we kind of just pride ourselves a part of, uh, of being that. And we try to try to set the precedent for a lot of things in Western New York. So today we're going to talk about uh, building an RPO offense from the ground up. And we got into that world going into the 2017 season and kind of have evolved ever since. Uh, so what I want to do is give you guys a basic framework of how you're going to go about putting in that offense when, you know, maybe you're a, a triple option team or you're a pro team or you're a wing T team, what have you. And you say, yeah, you know, I think it's time to go to the world or you might be a spread team and you don't RPO and you might want to figure out an easy way to do it. So uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a background, um, a little bit of a dissertation on how this goes about, and then we'll get into the film behind it. So um, our program, our high school, Lancaster, we went no huddle spread in 2008. Uh, we were one of the first true spread teams in our area, and our base philosophies are still rooted within that system. So like I said, we had a longtime coach retired 2011. Um, our current head coach and defensive coordinator were demoted to JV when the JV staff came to varsity. Um, and it was good because it allowed them to tinker with the offensive system and in a kind of a lesser high stakes environment and allowed them to kind of experiment with some different things and see where it went. Um, 2015, our current hard, uh, varsity head coach uh, got moved up to be the offensive coordinator and we set 17 school records in one year coming off a 10 and 17 three year run. Um, we had two generational talent players who were in the class of 2017. Um, and at the time, we were a 10 personnel heavy offense, and uh, we were 69% of the time in, in 10 personnel. We were a little bit of 20 personnel and a little bit of 12 personnel. So 2016, first year as the staff, um, you know, win the sectional championship and, um, you know, had a really good team. But we relied a lot on those two generational players uh, to make explosive plays. We had a really good junior quarterback, and we were going to have 17 starters returning. So we knew that we had a chance to – do something really special that year, but we needed to evolve to stay on top of the mountain. So we asked ourselves two questions going into the off season and, and really distinctly, how do you replace those two players? Well, you don't. Okay. Because they just don't grow on trees. They're generational talent. So how do you replace that? And we asked what were colleges doing um, with their offenses that we were not. We were a spread offense and we were using pretty much already a collegiate system, but we wanted to know what those colleges were doing that we were not. So we were scourging around and trying to find college all 22 film. It wasn't as easy as going into the game pass and now college all 22 film is kind of regularly available, but we were able to find a bunch of it on eBay. Honestly, it was like seasons worth of the DVDs and we got our credit cards out and we bought like a couple hundred dollars worth of film and we would upload it all into huddle and we would break it down and we would basically come up with a language and a terminology and we wanted to study the best offenses and uh we started with clemson because they just won the national championship baylor scored a ton of points old miss had beaten alabama oregon obviously that goes without saying ohio state and houston with tom herman auburn we studied them all we took all the best parts of those offenses and kind of came up with words and vocabulary for them so we set out basically with that in mind to replicate the production that those guys had. And we focused on explosive runs and red zone efficiency and kind of basically the money ball effect. And if you remember the movie Moneyball, you can't replace Giambi, but how can you replace Giambi's numbers? So that's kind of the way we went about it. What we found when we studied those offenses was 
the use of 11 personnel was by and far and by far the top used personnel uh, group in college football. RPOs were being used on a play-by-play basis, and that started to really grow. And it was really just a Big 12 thing at first, and then it really kind of took off through college football going into that 2017 season. The use of the tight end or the H-back versus inline tight ends were treated as different entities by the defense. So if that H-back was off the majority of the time, they weren't checking trips to it. But if he was in line and it was like a pro trips, they were checking trips to it. So they treated that player differently and how they played their coverages and you mainly use their safeties in their quarters coverages um, made that stuff really different. The use of multiple personnel groupings to move receivers around to create mismatches. Uh, we were really static. That generational player we had always lined up on the left and the outside receiver. He played our number one guy here, our X guy. 95% of the snaps. Okay. Um, we had a bigger type of kid, you know, who was more of a Y. He played on the right side until we went trips, you know. So we kept those guys really kind of static. We changed that going into 2017 because we had a really, really special receiver and we moved him around all over the place and it became really hard to keep track of him. Um, we realized moving the back around into different empty sets created mismatches and the defenses really only have one or two checks to empty. And one of them usually involves bringing six guys and usually it's going to play zero behind it um some teams will run like their eyes pressures against you but they really don't see that to empty because i think defense corners are afraid to do it um and then various tempos along with motions and motions and shifts created uh built-in leverage problems just by going fast and by changing up how you did it so um what we started doing after that and what we ended up building at, at Lancaster was we built a playbook um, and we tried to make it a playbook, but like, I want to say about 500 pages in, we kind of just said, we can't keep going. We have too many variations based off just a few simple things. So we, we joke all the time that our playbook is written in pencil. And we really say that because it's very fluid and it's a very ever changing thing week to week. Um, we created an offense within the context of our rules that was a melting pot of the top offenses in college football. We could have taken all those things that they had done and said, yeah, we're going to do this, 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 and this, and this. But realistically, you can't install that much. Like you can't put in that much and expect your high school kids to do it, especially if you're not a two platoon school like ours um, was at the time. So um, we built our philosophy around personnel placement, tempo, spacing, vertical run game, vertical throw game. And we don't do a lot. We just do what we do well. Uh, we want to make our opposing defensive coordinators weekends absolutely miserable. Uh, we want those guys to sit there for hours and try to figure out what they're going to get from us. Um, we ask our guys to do what they can do. One more comment about the defensive coordinators. You talk to the guys in our division and they tell you all the time. They're like, oh, yeah, we know exactly what you do. We know exactly. Great. Cool. Like, it, it is what it is. It's all on film. Like, here you go. We're going to go through an entire clinic on what we do it's not really that complicated um we just have answers and we know how to fix problems and we know how to disguise things to make your weekend really tough to figure out what's coming and when so we want to put our best guys on their worst um we want to minimize the offensive line install and maximize the tags variations to the skill guys okay that's really really important all right we don't ask our offensive linemen to do a lot in fact we have about three run schemes that we go with that's it Inside zone, outside zone, and gap, you know, power counter. That's it. You know, we run a little trap here and there, inside trap, just because it looks good against some of the teams we play. But that's really about it. Like, we really – we don't do much. Um, we have two pass protection schemes, one sprint out scheme, and two screen schemes. That's it. You know, that's, that's all we ask those guys to do. The best analogy I heard about installing with the offensive line is it's like the union, okay? They don't want to know a lot of stuff. OK, they just want to show up, punch the clock, get down and dirty, do what they do and get out. They don't need to know anything else. They just want to get good at what they do and move along. And that's kind of what we try to do with our guys. And you can instill the whole blue collar mentality if you choose to go about. It. So just an example of that. 2018, we went in to play our, our big division rival in week eight, the regular season. And we ran 224 different plays going into that game. And we only did it off 13 concepts. And we did that, um, basically, if you were to put in every variation of formation, motion, 
um, RPO personnel places. We're in 224 different places. So I don't know how you prepare for it. That's, that's, you know, we did our job going into that game. Um, but RPOs really kind of became our identity going forward. And it started for us in 2017 as a few RPO plays. And then the more film we watched and the more we studied, it kind of evolved into, well, we could do it every snap. Um, I have a triple option background and I coached five years in the flex bone veer and it's probably the greatest offense going out there. And obviously it's not run as much because it's hard to recruit it, but all the service academies run it because they don't really have to worry about recruiting as much. And, you know, it gives them an edge and helps them out. So um, basically in the triple option, we have a very limited amount of plays, but we can take slots, receivers, dummy motions, um, shifts, unbalanced, and we can create a lot of different variation without changing anything up front. So we're not going to add bulk, but we're going to focus on combining things we already do and the things that we added uh, from the study to, mi uh, to minimize teaching but maximize reps. And that's the big thing is we get an unbelievable amount of reps in practice. Um, our starting offense is probably going to get anywhere between about 130 to 140 reps of practice. Um, when we go with tempo, uh, when we mix in the different periods, and we only go team for about 15 minutes, 18 minutes tops. You know, we're in and we're out, but we go really fast when we do. So most uh, defensive coordinators that we see uh, don't really change much and, and run some archaic defenses. We see three, four, four defenses. One's a three, four man match quarters, and they get a little creative with some stuff. Uh, two, four, three, cover threes, uh, quarters to two by two and cover three or cover one everywhere else. And then one, three, three stack split field coverage quarters. So um, we don't really see a ton of variation. I'll talk to coaches down south and they are playing a whole different ball game that we're playing in Western New York. I mean, with the three dime, uh, with the tight fronts and the three safety defenses and um we don't see any of that stuff. So we're allowed to be a lot more simple because we can be, there's going to be some stuff when we go through the film here uh, that you'll see that is in there that we don't have a lot of film of ourselves on because we haven't had to use it yet because we just haven't, uh, we don't see that stuff. So going back to 2016, 2017 explosive runs uh, we had 45 with that generational running back. Okay. And he was responsible for 39 of them. When we added the RPO element to our offense in 2017, we only had about hundred more snaps and we finished with 82 explosive runs. So we basically increased our volume by 43%, give or take, and nearly doubled it by just adding the RPO to our offense. Um, and we're still the only RPO offense in the largest division in Western New York. Um, so there's eight, eight teams in there and we're the only ones that RPO. There's another team that uh, they had like 12 pre-snap quick game throws that were off of runs, but that doesn't really, that's not what we're doing here. We have pre-snap options in, but this is the whole deal. So, um, so questions we had to ask, and these are things that you guys, if you want to add and go into the RPO, you're going to have to look at. So the first one is, can our quarterback do this? Like if you don't have a quarterback that can get the ball out quick and is accurate, it ain't going to look good. Okay. And, and what is our pipeline looking like? Well, we had a senior quarterback coming in, his little brother was a freshman and we were going to have him for three years. Um, we knew that we were going to have a good quarterback behind him. We have a very good quarterback behind him too. Um, we have another one of our kids. We're, we're basically, we're set. We have a transfer coming in. That's going to be in a sixth grade class. We're set all the way through. So we're comfortable jumping into this world. Okay. Um, we had to watch film and figure out how do our opposing defenses fit the run? Uh, because a lot of this is about protecting your RPOs and building in constraints, but we had to figure out, okay, well, how, how are defenses going to try to fit us? Um, are they going to fit to the back? Are they going to fit away from the back? Um, do they just play with a static front, which we see a lot. We see a lot of four, four, cover three, cover one. Like, um, it, it makes it kind of easy to call plays. Um, you know, how are we going to teach our quarterback to read it? That's the big thing. That's the million dollar question. There's a lot of books out there. There's a lot of ways to do it. There's a lot of people who are way smarter than I am out there. Um, kind of got some ideas from Rich Hargett a little bit. Um, obviously, you know, Rich is pretty much the de facto RPO guy nationwide and he's awesome. And I've talked to him a little bit and seen him clinic. He is, he's the real deal. Um, so some of the ideas kind of come from that a little bit. Honestly, we just 
built a triple option count system into it and it made it immensely easy. And that made it easy for me to help teach because, well, I spent five years in a triple option system. So we had to figure out how we were going to practice it. That's evolved over time too. We actually practice it less and less every practice because it's combined in with stuff. So we used to start with an RPO period and I recommend doing that. Um, and now we just do quarterback eye control drills when we do our zone read period, you know, when we do like our, our mesh drill, our beer drill, whatever you want to call it. Um, what will the quarterback footwork look like on passes? We'll get into that because I think the mesh point and the launch point and how the quarterback's going to throw the ball is paramount to making this thing work. Because again, it all goes back to accuracy. If your quarterback can't throw the ball from point A to point B accurately, this doesn't work. Okay. Like anything. Um, will our linemen get uh, downfield and cause penalties? Listen, I'll give you the answer. If you coach your linemen up right, and um, we haven't been called on it in three years, but if you coach your offensive line right, and they're not just flying up to the next level and they're taking their proper control steps and they're comboing right at the right level, which is something you'll see on our film and we have to get better at comboing, but we don't really get that far downfield. Um, what are the answers going to be for when defenses finally figure out what we are doing? Um, you know, we've had them built in and we have some things ready to go that, you know, we have, we don't have any tape of, so it's not on this presentation, but we can go to it when we need to. So, um, and will we ask our sub varsity team to do it? Uh, we don't, our JVs don't RPO. Um, we just, you know, we'll combine everything when we need to, when we get to varsity, you know, we'll just focus on the fundamentals and get better at football there. So goal of the offense and the goal of RPOs, in my opinion, is twofold. It's very simple. Can we make defenses go from a six-man box to a five-man box in four open sets or a seven to a six and 11 or 12 personnel sets? So we were very heavy, very, 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 very heavy run in our 11 and 12 personnel sets the last couple of years, last two years. And we see all one high defense to it. 97% of the snaps we see in those two in the last two years have been one high defenses. So it makes it super easy to kind of, because you know where everything is. So reading things and, and deciding where you gotta go with the ball becomes really easy because you don't have to worry about where the extra fitter is. But what we can do is try to take that seventh guy out of the equation. Likewise, those four, four cover three defenses we were talking about, we don't have to worry about where the extra fitter is coming from. We already know where he is, but we can make that guy, um, we can make it kind of hard for that extra guy to come into the equation. So. It's really about just flipping the math uh, to getting it back in your favor. Football is all about that numbers game and, and space, really. And really any sport is about, can we get more numbers to the point of attack or can we maximize the amount of space that we are attacking? And that's really football or, you know, any sport in a nutshell, hockey, lacrosse. How can we utilize the space and get one more body there? Defenses, they want to get plus one to the hole. All right. They want to get plus one on the fit. Offenses, we want to get, we want to negate that. It's, it's just a math game. Okay. Um, and we want to protect our base run structures while maximizing the amount of stress on the defense. Okay. We want to use RPOs as a weapon though, not as a relief. Uh, you know, in fact, Tom Herman in his playbook and, and those guys, they call them reliefs. We want to use our RPO and attack them as a weapon. So here's, here's some film, we'll get into this for you guys here. Okay. So this is our sectional championship game. It's a pretty cool deal in our area. Um, we get to, we get to play, um, our, our sectional championship at, at the bill stadium. This is a big rivalry game. Uh, these guys actually, these guys were dominant, the powerhouse football team in Western New York for, you know, 15 years. And we kind of have jumped that in the last few. And, uh, they had a really, really good team, a lot of talented, talented athletes that we just don't have. We just don't get those kind of kids at Lancaster. Um, we're outmanned about 45 pounds of guy up front on the offensive line. We have, we don't really get true offensive linemen. Our right tackle is 6'3", 240. He's our biggest guy. The rest of the guys are about 225 and below. That's just who we are. You know, even the year we went to state, our defensive line averaged 182 pounds across the board. We're just, we don't get big kids here. This team, they get monsters. These two kids in the interior here, 265. Uh, the Askin kid was like 250. They were really good. They have a 6'6", 210-pound defensive end, you know. So we got to figure out how to do it. And this middle linebacker was all state. So he was pretty good. So this is in the um, fourth quarter, and this is a critical juncture of the game. But we talk about, now, they're already in a four-man box. But what do we do with the RPO, or at least the illusion of it, all right? We wanted to, we were trying to attack the fitter to the read side over here. This is a kid that we wanted to pick on. Well, he kind of takes himself out of the play as it is, but now 
all right, now he's not even in the play. All right. And they took a kid who's a really good athlete just to match him because this kid for us, who's running the screen was really good. Okay. And we wanted to block the front side of this because we were running inside traps. So we didn't RPO it. We wanted to make sure we were secure on that one. So next play, we go tempo with it. All right. And, and once again, he's out of the play again. So the guy we want to attack is out of the play. We push forward and we get yards. All right. We go back with it a third play and we're going really fast again. Okay. Now we're second down. We freeze it down. We want to check it. All right. Now we want to attack him on the front side because of the scheme we're running here. All right. Once we realized, okay, it's this kid that's out here and we get a big yards, you know, a big explosive run. Their defensive coordinator doesn't like it very much, but you're, you're handcuffed because it's just, it's a big math equation. You know, we're like, thanks. Like, just keep running it. Of course, we decided to take the shot on the next play and got a 35 yard completion and did it with tempo. So, um, you know, for us, it's uh, my, my guy down here at the X loves it, but he knows what we're doing. We're just, you know, we're keeping it really simple. We had the math in our equation. Now, what would have happened if they would have switched to a four two box and one single high? Well, now I got all my one on ones across the field and our receivers are not the best athletes, but they're pretty fast. Um, you know, he's a D two kid. He's a D three kid. He's a D one baseball kid. Um, he's a junior. He's a junior. So, you know, and our quarterbacks five foot nine, 151 pounds. So, you know, we're, we're not spectacular here. Okay. Like athletically body wise, but you know, it's just about flipping the math to do things the right way. So why do we RPO? All right. Well, it allows us to have an answer for teams who are better than us. Well, that's the same triple option philosophy across the board. Why we run it? Because teams, well, they're just more athletic than us. All right. We're probably one of the least God made athletic teams in our division. You know, we got Orchard Parker. We just showed they were way better. Clarence, their kids they've had the last couple of years. Oh my goodness. You know, way better than us. Bennett, you know, we don't get those kids. So we got to figure it out. All right. And RPOs have helped. We want to protect our base run schemes and structures. Um, we want to put uh, the defensive best players in conflict to slow them down. All right. And I'll, I'll give you a great example. When I was running the triple option, we played this team, East Aurora, who was really, really good. And they had this defensive end who was 6'5 and 220 pounds. And he was really good. And we had to figure out how we were going to handle him. So the best way we did it was they, they played a 5'3 Bears look. And we were just picking on him all game. And we would toss it on him. We would pitch off of him. We would read him. And by the second half, he didn't know what was coming. So he couldn't do anything. So we just said, okay, we'll keep it really simple and attack that kid because he was in conflict, slowed him down. All right. Uh, we want to put our best athletes in space and get him the ball. Well, yeah, like that's, you know, I remember I was in, I've coached in every system. Okay. I've coached a wing T system. I've coached in a triple option system. I've coached in a pro I system. The worst thing about those offenses, like they have their pros, but you can't really get your athletes, the ball in space. Okay. And it's really easy to bracket them when there's less of them. So yeah, okay, you're great. You're running the ball, you're running buck sweep, or you're running ISO uh, kick out off tackle. But at the end of the day, you're scoring 17 points, 20 points to do it when we could score 40 by just getting the fast kid, the ball out in a lot of grass. Like, I don't know, to me, that makes a lot of sense. Again, love stressing out defensive coordinators. We take a lot of pride in that. We want to, um, there's one defensive coordinator that he loves to put pictures of us when they're scouting, um, just watching football. And it's always the one game they beat us. It's like, man, do you must watch that game like, 35 times and haven't sworn to memory. But if you're stuck on just that one game, then maybe we're doing something right. I don't know. Uh, we want to force the defense to play discipline option football for 48 minutes and have to defend every inch of grass in the process. It could be very multiple week to week and have answers. And practice is more fun and energetic because now any one of those four kids can get the ball at any given time. It allows us to play fast. allows us to play tempo. It just, it, it's more fun to coach football in that, in that setting. All right. Um, so how to RPO. All right, so now this is the good stuff that we're going to get into, okay? So it's really easy. Drop your run schemes, identify where protection problems may exist, and then attach your base passes and perimeter screens to it to compensate. That's all you got to do. Um, see what players you can put in conflict or need to that can cause you trouble in the run game, okay? Um, identify the defense's run fits and attack those. See who becomes the extra fitter and RPO off of them. Easier to do against four down teams, three down teams. Um, you know, obviously there's more moving parts to it. We're a hybrid, you know, four, two, five, three, four, okie. 
type thing. So, you know, defensively, our kids are kind of built in to see this every day. And, and still, it's like, you know, they got to, you can kind of pick on some things if you know what you're looking at. All right. Um, so we want to count the defenses and count the defenders below the safety from the outside in. So from a triple option, you count from the end or the read guy out. We're going to count from the outside in and go from below the safety level. So it's on the quarterback to kind of identify. And we tell them to shoot for eight yards. You know, the, the uh, surface to air guys at coach Hargett, they call it the, the hard deck. Um, we got that at the clinic. Sure. But it, if that guy looks like he's a safety, treat him as a safety. If he looks like he's starting to creep down as an outside linebacker, treat him as an outside linebacker. Okay. Um, it's not an exact science. It doesn't have to be. Um, we have some things that allow you to be wrong and still be okay in here too. Um, stretch the defense out wide by formation. The wider your receivers are from the end of the line of scrimmage, more likely are for a bigger play. All right. Um, we love spread them out. We don't spread them out as wide as we will. And we will get into that, but we can force um, one-on-ones. And the quarterback's able to trash anything and say, hey, pre-snap, like, hey, they're bringing heavy pressure. I'm just getting rid of it, okay? Um, and guess what? If you get rid of it, then you're just throw, still throwing your quick passes. Read your way out of it. It's not like, you know, it's a fail-safe system if you do it the right way. How to defend them. All right. So you have to play assignment football. And it's going to force you as a defensive coordinator to blitz smart or play conservatively by making them defend, dive, keep, and pitch every play. Well, that's just option football, okay? The difference is there's four different pitch guys. Like you have your quarterback and you know he's your keep. You have your back in the backfield. You know he's your dive. But who's the pitch guy? Because it could be from left to right, one, two, three, or four. All right, or one, two, or three if we're in a slot set, okay, or, or, or a pro set. Uh, it allows us to do those things. and it makes it really hard on a defense. Like, okay, I, I ball could go anywhere. All right. Um, defenses could sling the fit, which means they're going to get their back away from the fit and they're going to play pass to the running back side. So we use two different terms. We have the read side and we have the front side. If they're playing slow and playing pass to the read side on a run key. So an outside linebacker, he's reading the end man on the line of scrimmage. If he shows run, he's still playing pass until he knows it's run. Okay. Um, and then they'll get their fit and their extra fitters coming from away from the back. We don't really see that too much because, you know, again, when we start getting into our heavier sets, it, it's all one high defense anyway. So um, we want to play cover one. Um, you know, you can play cover one defense. It still keeps your light in the box, though. And all your RPOs are cover up. Great. You took away the RPOs, but I could still run read option with my back and my quarterback. If you're going to play cover one, I got one-on-one -on -one matchups that I'm going to win somewhere, all right, because of how we move our personnel around. And I can just throw you into the boundary if I want, and you got to do it. You know, most of the teams don't have an FIB check for us either. So we could attack that if we want. Um, or they can play cover zero and just bring heat. And that's fine too. Um, we love when we see that. Okay. Our kids like get giddy when we see zero pressure. Um, but offensively you have to have answers for zero pressure because if you don't, you're going to look really, really, really dumb. Okay. And it's going to be a really long Friday night because if a defensive, if a defensive coordinator knows he can heat you up and you don't have good answers for it, it'll be a wrong night, a long, long, long night. All right. So how to protect it? Well, you run RPOs again to protect your base run game by using your base passing game and screen game, okay? We will protect our RPOs by using our drop back game and deep play action game, okay? So if you got teams that are going to kind of aggressively jump hitches or whatever, well, then we'll play action and we can go over the top with you on it, okay? So here's some rules that apply that other coaches might relate with if you're trying to transition. Option rules, okay? If it's hard to read, he's easy to block. Well, like we showed you in that film at the stadium earlier, that guy out there, well, he was easy to block. We didn't really know what he was going to do because it was the gloss kid. He was really good at that. So we just went and blocked him. We said, all right, you know, we'll worry about um, we're going to run to that front side anyway. So we might as well just block him instead of, you know, taking it to chance. Okay. Um, and if he's hard to block, he's easy to read, you know, so think of it from an option end standpoint. If you're going to come down hard and spill and, and, and try to wrong arm things out and get to the ball to the perimeter, well, you're really kind of coming down hard. You're not thoroughly thinking about being red, okay? Um, so, you know, in, in most cases, again, we're dealing with high school kids, a little bit easier in college and the pros, obviously. But, um, you know, we're obviously going to read that kid. But if he's kind of feathering you and slow playing down the line and maybe boxing you, then, you know what, we'll just 
kick you out and block you. You know, we'll do it that way. All right, when in doubt, give it out. Quarterback makes a bad read. Follow your bad read and run the ball. Hey, we'll take it. A couple extra yards. not going to hurt. Um, okay, really important rule. We talk about secured edges and non-secured edges, okay? So secured edges are both defensive ends or both C-gaps are blocked, all right? Um, that will dictate if you can throw the ball downfield on RPOs or not, okay? And non-secure is we're going to run screens and pre-snap stuff, okay? Um, we could secure the edge out of 10, 11, or 12 personnel. It doesn't really matter. Um, we can go non-secured with both of them. doesn't really matter as well there. Um, so option principles, when you create an offense, again, it's more for us. We're at the point where if they do this, then we're going to do that. Um, it's just having answers and knowing how to fix different things is really important. And then we designed our scheme and we've really had a lot of time because we didn't play football this fall in Western New York. We, we had a flag football league. So unfortunately that's the hand of cards that our state was dealt. So we really spent a lot of time redesigning a lot of stuff on the offense um, with the kids that we have, but we really use wing T principles too. We're, we're, what we're going to be doing now is make everything look the same. Call it in a sequence. You have your base play, you have your counter and you have your counter off of your counter. So for us, really, you have your base play, your counter, and then your RPO is probably your counter off of your counter. Um, or the play action pass is the counter off of the counter, depending on what series we're living. So, so mesh point, uh, we drill the heck out of this, okay? 2017, we were really poor at it, and we elected not to change what the current starter and current and that running back was comfortable doing. So we didn't want to overcoach them. We just said, all right, hey, look, you, you're good at what you do. Uh, 2018, we started redesigning it and we were, became a lot more natural at it. So our running back will line up behind the guard, toes through the quarterback's heels. Um, he does not move on the snap of the ball. He will move when the quarterback seats the ball. Okay. And you'll see some examples of this on film. He will lateral step to three or nine o'clock. Second step is into the line on zone on gap. We go opposite first. We want to emphasize our running back staying as square as possible into the line of scrimmage. But more importantly, it's for the quarterback getting the ball out on RPO is why we changed this footwork. So the quarterback will pivot off his near foot to the back and get his toes in line with the pivot foot. Now, how often do we do that? Not much, but it's the same reason that we tell him, okay, hey, when we block, we want to block his thighs, knowing that we're going to get belt level. You know, it's just over-exaggerating the technique that we are installing. Okay. So we do the same thing too. We ask him to kind of get your toes in a line when you're riding that mesh point in uh, quarterbacks, not responsible for the mesh. It's the running back's job. He's responsible to the mesh. Sometimes he gets a little bit deeper. Sometimes he gets a little bit closer. It just depends on feel. You know, there's a cut up on here where we were playing a team that started playing a tight front and our zone was kicking out the backside of the C gap. And he's like, coach, I need to back up a little bit so I can read Do whatever you need to do. All right. I'm not going to sit here and overcoach you. Like I said, our offense is written in pencil, all right? I was a JV coach at a school once, and they were like, nope, we don't run that. We can't do that. We can't do this. I'm like, well, you know, maybe you should, <laughs> you, know, the, you know, because longevity might work a little bit better. Um, but, you know, that's, I think, is really important is you have to be able to adapt to the players that you have. You have to be able to adapt to the personnel that you're facing and the schemes that you're facing, all right? Um Ask your kids to do what they do best. Don't ask the Italian chef to make Chinese food. You know, it's not going to be great. It's not going to be authentic. So I'm going to ask a kid to do what he can do well. All right. I had a kid that could run options. So we put in a couple quick option plays for him. You know, oh, coach, we don't do that. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, what do you want? So stay within the context of your system. I'm, I'm not saying that, but, you know, I'm just saying, don't be afraid to switch up stuff as long as it doesn't break the rules of your blocking. If you need to tag stuff and get stuff on the perimeter, then get to it. So mesh point, again, that's pretty simple. That's right straight from our install tape. But um, so here's us in 2017 um, when we weren't changing it here. So here's our footwork before, and it, you can see it's really choppy. Now he knew he was going to throw this and this was P and 10 for us. And we knew that we were going to run this safety read RPO. And we knew that he was going to run his choice up top um, because of what they were playing. Like their safety's walking down off the edge to be a fitter and like we're out. But if you look at this mesh point, like that's not even real. Now this team we were playing was not very good, but you know, if you're playing a good team, I, I, I'm happy with my running back spake that he carried out. That was good. He got, 
you know, bonus points for that in film, but you know, this is sloppy mesh work. That's not fooling anybody. The ball is not in his belly. The running back's not square to the line of scrimmage. It's just really, really sloppy. So if we fast forward to where we're at now, all right, not great still. Um, this was earlier in the season, you know, he takes that lateral step and kind of gets into the mesh, but he gets his eyes up. Well, quarterback does a, does kind of a poor job here. And again, this is early in the season. This takes a lot of reps. These are two juniors who were back here. Um, you know, they got better at it as the season went along, you know, but you can see the difference. We're a little bit closer. We're going to run that in, but it allows him to kind of cut it back here. Um, this is a good film cut up here. So this is an Orchard Park team. We were playing earlier in the season. I don't like how he steps back, but I like how square he is to get into the hole. All right. And I like where my quarterback is because here's the point of the quarterback's mesh. Okay. If you look at where his feet are. Okay. Now, again, I wish that front foot was a little bit more up here, but right here is not bad, but all we're going to tell him to do is that look, we want to attack this later in the game, because if you look at all of this grass that's up here, like this is RPO central, like, Oh my God, like let's hit that. Okay. So all he has to do is we tell him that imagine you're going to take a stake and pound your foot into the ground. Okay. And this is your pivot foot in basketball. He's a pretty good point guard too. All right. So all he has to do is just re pivot and swing that foot back. And now he's kicked to balance his hip, his shoulder, all right. And his front knee are all facing this window to throw the ball into. Okay. So that makes it a little bit easier and a little bit more natural for him to throw the ball. So I got some college, like I said, I got college film on here for you guys too, because I want, um, I, I want you to see how it's supposed to look a little bit too, um, what we strive for. But again, we're, we're high school. So we, we, we do what's best with what we have. Um, See, so yeah, here's down at the stadium. You know, again, here's the winning touchdown late in the game for us with under a minute to go. We're just running power. All right. Really good. Quarterback, perfect. Look at, like, I know the goalpost is kind of in the way here, but if you look at where his feet are, boom, front hip there, ball's in. We got all of our points covered. The ball is being chinned. This is an A-plus rep. It's a championship rep because we won the championship on this play. All right. I love how the running back stays square, gets downhill, doesn't follow the polar, finds the double team or the down blocks, which, you know, just by their default alignment didn't really turn to. And that's, that's like perfect. Like that's, that's good clinic tape stuff. Um, all right. Yeah. So here's the odd front team we we're talking about. He's a little bit deeper than he is, but this is really good. Cause look at how square this kid is now. Okay. Quarterback in RPO. And he did a few times this game. Cause we were picking on, uh, we were picking on this guy over here, number 22. Okay. But if you look at this, like this is really good for running too, because now this kid's out, gets the ball up, takes the hit and gets positive yards. Like that's, that's a really good rep. Quarterback could have thrown this here if he wanted to. Um, I don't know why we just ran a smoke over here. We probably should have just hitched it, and, but um, we were just running it here in that situation. Okay. Um, two off the edge. So beg your pardon. Sometimes it, when we go slow, we do go slow. So here's good. Stay square. Quarterback's eyes. Great. Okay, ball is just under his sternum. Perfect. He's square, cuts right through, and that's an explosive run. So we talk about a vertical run. Like our inside zone can hit anywhere, anywhere we want it to go. Okay. Signaling in, dummy signaling in. You know, some of it's live, some of it's not. We 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 have some fun with some different things each week to keep teams guessing. Um, our kids are pretty good at adapting. So, but because we're square, now again. RPO wise, he just kind of fakes the throw out here and that's good. But here's the other thing too. Now, yes, they walk down and they're running zero. Like I said earlier, we get really excited when teams bring zero pressures. All right. But watch this kid. Now he's like, what's going on here? And well, he just wipes right out. Like that's, that's kind of cool. Um, we actually did that to him a couple years ago too. And their safety kind of just, you know, his, he was on skates there for a second. So identifying the defenses, it's really simple. Two high safeties. The defense is a minus one pre-snap. Reading the RPO is the sixth bidder. Okay, pretty easy. So figure out, identify who you want the sixth bidder to be, all right, or who that's going to be, and RPO him. You know, pretty simple concept. Again, we want to turn that into a, um, 
uh, you know, we want to turn that thing into a five man, keep it at a five man when there are two safeties. Okay. If we're 10 personnel, if it's one high safety, the defense is even pre-snap. Okay. Um, we're going to read grass on the pre-snap. Um, you know, or if the quarterback is protected, we're going to attack with the post. Okay. Um, we're probably going to run screen RPOs unless if it's a three by one set there. Okay. If it's a one high safety, just make it really easy. Zero high safeties, defense is plus one pre-snap. And like I said, that's where we're going to take some shots or run some read option stuff. Um, you know, we just check that down and it makes it really easy. So we do a lot of that stuff on the fly. Our quarterbacks and backs are pretty good at figuring out like, oh, pre-snap, their eyes, their eyes are good. It's going to scan. It's going to turn into a read, a read option or it's going to be an RPO. The RPO is still going to be on. So um, five-man box, pretty much always a two-high look. Run the ball. You know, if you're an 11 personnel, look, if you've got numbers, we just run the ball unless something's really sweet, okay? So how do we teach our quarterback to read it? All right, well, here's his order of operations. I know the down and distance. Is it smart to throw the ball here, okay? Um, then we look at the box count, okay? Is it, can we do it? Yes, yes, yes. Are there pre-snap gifts? Is there open grass? Um, so we'll ask our kids – what field do you want to play on? Do you want to play in the box or do you want to play from the hash out left or from the hash out right? What looks really good to you, you know, and then get into your counts. Counts are really for post snap. Okay. Pre snap. It's like, okay, is there grass out there? Like, we'll take it. Thank you. Like, we'll, we'll just do it. If the grass looks greener, just throw it. Um, there's some teams that want to play games like they'll, they'll show, but if your slot receivers are really wide, that picture is crystal clear for your quarterback. He, they can't bluff stuff because you're going to bluff down, but you're never going to get to your end point fast enough. It's really simple. All right. So post snap reads for the quarterback. If it's a screen read, read number two or the overhang. Um, we have arrow and then slip, but that's for the defensive end. Um, second level RPOs. If we are two, we read two. If we three, we read three. All right. Um, meaning if we're not, if we're, if we got two receivers, we're going to read the number two defender in our count system. If we're three, uh, we're going to read the number three defender in the count system. I'll show you a picture of that too. Safety read RPOs are really simple. Read the safety or the seven fitter. All right. And we love it because it allows us to throw a vertical, uh, a vertical shot on a, on a run play. And we have to do that out of secure edges. We're not going to ever, ever leave the backside open or the front side for that matter um, on an RPO and allow our quarterback to take a kill shot. Like I've seen teams that will do that. Like they'll not block the end and they'll just, try to throw like vertical stuff or like even quick game stuff like scares me. And I'm like, uh, you're just fixing to get your quarterback killed at some point. So you got motion RPOs. Basically you're reading the defense's leverage. Um, they move, they don't move. We don't do a ton of that just because we haven't really got into that world just yet. Um, and draw RPOs. We also have not gotten to that world just yet. Um, but we can show you how to do it. And if you want to talk more about that later on, we'll talk more about that later on. Um, so adjustments, very simple. If the defense is holding on the read side, or like we talked about slinging the fits, then, um, we can tag and throw out the front side off of that too. So quarterbacks are going to count from the outside in. We talk about safety level being about that eight, nine yard mark. Um, we call that the hard deck. We want to count from everything, uh, from the read side. in. so usually the corner is going to be almost number one all the time down safety or outside backer is going to be two. Um, and the middle linebacker is going to be number three. So we identify them just in our terms. We call them the Redskin or the Monster, depending on the side on it. Middle linebackers are Braves and our Warriors. So um, uh, no. So players listed are usual examples. Things can change, and that's why we count instead of labeling those defenders. We might just identify like, hey, like that guy's the Rover here, or you know, whatever. But we like to just number them because. Defenses will roll coverages, they'll play games, they'll do a bunch of stuff. So, um, so pre-snap look for us, you know, here we're just running to play a, a, a zone run here. We got a 4-2 box, we're trips down to the field. Um, so again, what field do we want to play on? So if we're going to count this out, well, technically he's almost at like, almost at nine. So you can count him as a safety. We really looked at this as just free access. So we're going to take it and he ends up taking it. Spoiler alert. But if we were to count traditionally, he would be one. All right. He would be two. And that's all we would have. So if we counted from over here, I'm guessing there's a corner. I guess there's an outside backer would be two. And then this guy would be three. It's, it's really simple guys. It's, we're not overly complicated. He just kind of takes the now and just gets free yards. Like that's, 
Thanks. That's a, that's an 11 yard play that we got just because you gave it to us. So front side RPOs, um, we don't really do it much because again, we don't have to, we can, and we're built in to do it. We just haven't really done it. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll look at some things that teams are rotating to fit the run or if they're playing buzz cut, you know, whatever it may be. Um, if the quarterback keys field edge pressure, he can make a trash call and throw it if he wants to. Um, you know, that'll take it about bluffing. All right. Yeah. So some college film, let's talk about that. So obviously let's talk about what field we're playing on. Okay. They're in pro set pro trips. Okay. You have this guy over here. This guy's kind of tightened down for too much. Of, I don't know why he's that tight. But he just takes it and throws it. Okay, well, let's see. That just turned into an 11-yard play. Thanks. That, that's really easy. Okay, here's another front side action here. Um, this was that famous TCU-Baylor game where Baylor ended up coming back and winning. Like, they were down, I don't know, like 58 to 37 in the fourth quarter, and then they ended up winning 61 to 58. I, I just remember watching that game because it never ended. It was like 8 o'clock at night, and they still couldn't get to the ABC night game because this was still this insanity was going on all right so um here's an example of us doing it so really not a great idea from the quarterback but i think he just he didn't like what we were running up front so he just took it and this is a decent matchup again he's an okay player we're a little too tight here um honestly and, and what you'll see from us is we'll this kid will probably eventually start being here you know when we start running the ball um, but we could throw off of it too, because it gives us some beautiful windows to throw the ball into. So he just takes it and just, yeah, I'm just going to wing it out there. Um, we get a good block to the perimeter, but here you go. Now, all of a sudden we turned a, you know, a 12 yard gain into, you know, a play where they're loading up the box into a 12 yard gain here. So pretty simple. All right. Um, Secured edges, so they got C gap to C gap is secure. Um, this is kind of how you would do it out to the perimeter here, and snaps it back out, and throws it to the perimeter. Really, really easy. Okay, and they're reading number two on that one. Okay, um, so here this is just backside. Sorry, bad film quality. This is old, but um, yeah, they read the safety on the backside of a power play. He comes down, and oh, you know we're going up top. The beauty of this is, and the reason we went to this every down RPO thing was because we're like, well, shoot, they still have to defend the pitch every play in the triple option. So let's make them defend a the pitch. You know, let's keep those safeties from getting their noses involved in there. Okay. My disclaimer though, we want to run the football first. Okay. Do not lose the integrity of being a run football team. Um, but I will tell you the defense can't run both and be sound against us. Like it puts in a lot of pressure in them uh, to do it right. If you give your quarterback too many options, you will not be a running football team anymore. It destroys the integrity of the play. Also, if you will put like a pop pass and then a bubble pass and don't, don't like it's in, I've seen it in books. I've seen it online. I've seen some teams do it. You guys are probably a lot smarter than we are, but I don't recommend it, especially if you're just starting into this world. Um, like I said, this is kind of building it from the foundation up. So um, start simple. Okay. Refer back to a yes, no approach, triple option. Yes or no. Do I like it or not? Keep it simple. Be needy, not greedy. Okay. Get yards. Don't, don't fall behind schedule uh, just for it. Okay. So here's a little bit more about the count system we talked about. And I just drew up against the four, two quarters. Look, uh, it's very quite simple. All right. So over here, you got your one. All right. You got your two and you got your three. It's not overly hard. Safety's up top. He's at the hard deck. Okay. Now over here, I got one. Do I have a pre-snap grass? Yes or no. All right. Two. Yeah. Okay. All right. So he's two. So if we're reading two on something, well, you know, if we're reading two and running a little slant or something, but if we want to read him on, an, uh, on something deeper and then have him run his choice route or whatever we're running vertically. Okay. You know, he can, he can do whatever he's doing. Okay. Off of that kit. So if we're going to read the safety count there. Okay. And trips. Well, same thing, you know, it's one, two, or three. Hey, you're reading one, you're reading two, you're reading three. Trips, love reading this kid because are you folding into the box? All right. Um, we get a lot of overfronts. So if we got threes out here, like 
now you got to be an a gap fitter unless if you really push this over and then he's coming down and if that's the case then i know i got my one-on-one over here it's just a matter of where can we find the matchup um that we want to pick on um you know okay you want to start showing different looks and everything well that's fine too you're going to be unsound somewhere okay and it's just a matter of us keeping to it no different than any triple option okay here's our run game really easy okay here's all the ways we run inside zone here's all the ways we run half zone where we play man on the backside turns into an iso series here's our wide zone here's our jet sweep stuff here's our power stuff okay so we've taken a couple of things so here's we talked about four scheme one scheme two scheme three and just by tagging it a little bit differently we keep the structure of the scheme but we just combine different things okay and we could create all these plays to and it really doesn't take much like and i'll tell you flat out here's our day one install okay we get that done in 10 minutes so we've already run five variations of inside zone quarterback stuff you put that in on day one too so that's eight we're running eight different ways of inside zone on day one it, and we don't install it you know at, in team again we part part whole everything um it, it becomes really quite simple how we do our process and if you want to talk a little bit more about how we install things um you know again i'll give you contact information at the end of it okay um you know it's really simple how we do it but it's a it's a really effective process that allows us to maximize what we do and get a ton of reps at the same time okay um here's our rpo menu you know it's really simple what we do it doesn't doesn't really change much okay so let's get into the nitty gritty i'll get you some of the films here okay so screen stuff um we have quicks we have nows all right so not everyone's going to be a throw okay again you know we know um we knew that we were going to run probably a little bit more here but we were looking out here to run hitches i hate our spacing down here i don't know why we are this close out here we should not be all right, he should be, basically, he should be where this kid is, and he should be down here on the numbers. I don't know why we're so tight. Um, but we're kind of a little bit off there, okay? So, okay, yeah, so this is a couple of years ago. So, I don't know, you guys tell me where the ball's going to go. You know, it's pretty simple to me, okay? So, if we're counting, here's one. He's a safety. He's not even in it. Here's two. So, if we're reading two, and we know we're throwing the ball out here, yeah, just get rid of it. All right, gets the ball in there, two suckers in, we throw the ball out to the perimeter. It's a great job of stock blocking by this kid here. All right, does his job. He was a junior in that one. He had a good little run there. All right, footwork was ugly, but now you'll see how the footwork is a lot better. Now, he doesn't do a great job of stock blocking on this one. Same kid, next year as a senior. Same two kids as in the previous clip. All right. But watch how the quarterback gets the ball out. Now, this is the quarterback from the previous clip's little brother is a sophomore. It was about a buck 38, he wishes. Okay. So here's the footwork. But watch him snap back, kick to balance. They brought it off the edge. Okay. Now we're just running inside zone. Okay. They, they, they came off the edge with it. So we have to get it out quick. All right. But he's reading this kid over here, number 16, and now we're off to the races, okay? And that's just – so that's a play that they brought heavy pressure, heavy pressure against us that turned into a 33-yard touchdown pass because we RPO'd it. So we just built in an explosive, okay? Um, is that team again. So now they're playing games. This kid's backing off pre-snap, okay? He's two. He comes in, quarterback throws it out, all right? And he was able to sneak in. So, and that was the first touchdown of a playoff game, okay? Um, so this was in the sectional final that year. Okay, we're in an unbalanced set here, all right? If you look at how they were playing this unbalanced set, this made it like great. I don't really know what they're doing. It's not really sound because we have the, you know, if we're just lining up and running the ball, this is good defense for it, okay? Um, but when you got this perimeter game going on out here too, you know, that's 30 who we were reading, and now we're out there to the perimeter. Great block on, the, on, the, on that guy out there. So 
Um, you know, we can throw a ton of these different things. Okay. Now screen. So we used to be a traditional bubble team. We're really not anymore. Um, we do this just kind of two up and two back again. We're really tight here. We should be, he should be just forget he's here and then put him down there. That's kind of really where our base splits are. Um, but what field do you want to play on? Well, I'm three. So we're going to read him. Okay. One, two. But look at where his eyes are, okay? His eyes are in here. He's really itching close to the box. This is early in the game. He was fitting inside. He comes. So we just dump it out there, okay? 17 would have went out. Jason would have probably handed the ball off, all right? Shawnee gets in for the touchdown, okay? Um, this was in the playoffs two weeks later. You know, so numbers-wise, one, two, three, okay? Okay? They're pinned. They're pinned. He knew he was going to throw that right before the ball was even snapped. And we were able to get in. Okay. Um, so we talk about defending the pitch at any time. Okay. So this is third down and one. You can see down here, like we're inches to go. And this team is like ridiculously like athletic, ridiculous. Okay. But he was tagged on the RPO and they're just bringing two off the edge here. Okay. They love teams. You know, great, great. But it's third and one. Abort, throw, and you got three yards and you got the first down. Kept the drive going. Good deal. Okay. We could do it out of stack. We were in tempo here, so they didn't really get lined up fast. All right, stack is great if teams want to play man. Love it because they got to figure it out. And their stack check. Usually if you're in stack, you're going to get one or two, um, one or two looks a game. So bottom of the numbers, one, two. One, two up here, that safety comes down. We flip it out to the perimeter. That was a big play, okay? Same one over here, you know, team of the green. Not really sound. They're a quarters team, but they're matching us up here. Six-man box. They got everybody walked out here on the stack. We got a backup receiver here. We had, like, we had about 20 kids get sick this week. Um, it was really rough. We had viral thing going through the locker room that kid stepped up these two kids were not starters and they make a great play over here he kind of got beat up a little bit but he did his job and ethan does a good job he's a junior they're getting in for the touchdown right arrows another one we like we like to do it off the defensive end all right um if you don't want your quarterback to run the ball or he can't run the ball well this is how you can run zone read okay so we're looking at numbers we're reading 50 okay one two and three. We're in an unbalanced set over here. Okay. Um, so we're just going to read him because he's got a fit. Think about it. Let's go back and talk about their fits. Well, it's a zone fit. So he's got to fit his gap. All right. He's got to kind of fit his gap too, but he's a guy that we're reading on and he couldn't run. Okay. Or wouldn't run. I'm not really quite convinced of either, but we just flip it out there to the perimeter. Okay. And we're getting positive yards on that. And the kid was really, really good for us. Um, you know, so uh, this is another one, too. We love doing this against these guys this year. They were flare control heavy. So, all right, let's just flip the numbers back and read the next guy at the second level. Okay, it became really easy. All right. Got positive yards, but that defensive end, we took him out of the equation because now, okay, great, dude, you're not playing run anymore. So that worked out really good for us. We're happy about that one. Um, not great blocking on this play, but again, it kind of, it shows it. We're in this unbalanced set again here because we had numbers. He's got to push crack to this. This is just not really good, but had it, had we blocked it right, it probably would have been pretty good. We actually got called on a holding call on this a couple plays earlier, if I remember correctly. Um, so perils of having a five, nine quarterback, but I like it for showing the scheme. We're in 12 personnel here. All right. Um, so we're just going to push and then go out to the flat. I don't think we really push. It gets knocked down. But had it not got knocked down, I'm just an idea here, you know, guy, idea guy for you here, okay? Push off the edge, go to the flat. Um, and that's a lot of grass sets out here, okay? So that's a good one that, um, that we would have had in here, okay? Here's later in the game again. Um, we go unbalanced into the boundary. We're, we're hanging on for – dear life against these guys. They were way, this was a team we played at the stadium the year before, a couple years later, their entire team was back and our entire team was new. 
and we had all our guys sick and we had to figure out a way to beat these guys and we did uh, but this was a big play that allowed us to get in position to end the game but yeah he and sits we flip it out and it allowed us to get the first down on the next play because we really couldn't run against them okay now let's talk about this clip for a second here okay um there's some times where if you're an rpo team that's great there's some times where you need to run the rp no and this is the time where probably the no should have happened so we're just running the arrow he chases it he, we would have ran into the end zone here um and then to compound things make it worse and then yeah it shows how good of coaches we are <laughs> he just flips it out of bounds and this is probably one of the best flag throws i think i've ever seen in my life he's just kind of like yeah that's that's good stuff right there um we we needed to fix that going going forward. So, um, and, and we did after that. Actually, coincidentally, that that play was a pivotal moment in our season because it forced us to kick a field goal on a very windy night, and we really hadn't kicked yet. And it was that kid's first field goal, and we needed to hit a big field goal at the stadium for his second attempt of the year and drilled it. So, um, all right, all hitches, um, really simple. You know, it's just revert back to your rules. Okay, so. Here's that 3-4 team I was talking about. They were really good. But the thing was, we knew this kid was going to come more times than not. About 9 out of 10 times, whenever he'd cock his butt towards the play and look like he was showing man, he was going. Um, but they were a split field quarters team. Um, they'd run some two lock. They would, they would mix it up a little bit. They're really good and really creative. Um, they like to screw their coverage down here or run, you know, what they would call like seven mix or – um, you know, where again, it's, it's going to be some form of quarters out here, but he's going to screw down and it, it, essentially it just turns into cover zero at some point, but, um, we still like the hitches about it because now it keeps that kid in at bay. So, you know, okay. Gets through it kind of quickly, pulls it, throws it. And again, it's, that's five yards on first down. And I think that's P and 10 for us too. So that that's great. Hey, we're, we're ahead of the sticks on first down on the drive. I couldn't be happier, okay? Um, here's McQuaid in the state playoff game this year early on. Um, here we go. So let's go back to our rules. We're three on this RPO. We're reading three. Now, we're not reading him every time. Sometimes we're going to read this kid. All right, sometimes we're going to read that kid. So, you know, it, honestly, it's, it's not a foolproof science. But in this situation, we are reading this kid. So, um Split wise, this is where we should be more or less when we are running it. Um, like I was complaining about, we were too tight earlier. I wouldn't even mind him being a little bit wider, but this is really good because now this kid, and, and they're in a 3 3 stack look here, has to fit B or C gap, okay, depending on where they're at. Um, and he has to be able to play the seam as well. Now they can roll it down and do some different things, but if that's the world you want to live in, well, I have play actions to protect from that, okay? So we just know we have yards, and that's a first down. Eight-yard gain, not bad, okay? Um, so all hitches, and again, we're, we're really tight here. Uh, I don't know why we are so tight. I would probably venture to believe that he needs to be down here um, if you were to slide those guys out. But, yeah, so number 40, again, he's got his back towards the play. He's coming. You know, we knew that. Um, they're – doing a good job of kind of trying to wall him. So this is like the old TCU five wall stuff, I believe. So like, okay, that's cool too. So they're just going to throw it, but we can just dump it off to him. It's free yards. Like we're, we're just, if you, if you give us a little air, we're going to take it. Okay. Now um, the next time they played us in the playoffs, they played us in more three, three stack type stuff. Um, more two by two here. All right. And we just give it. Why do we give it? Because, well, let's count the box. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And six is out there. I mean, it's not really hard. We're not doing anything extravagant. It's just, you know, it's how hard, it's how RPO football works. All right. Um, yeah. So takes the backside here. Why not? Okay. Um, actually judging by how far he pushed, I think he was running a choice route here. So I apologize if that's out of order. Um, and he just sits it down on the choice route. So, um, okay. So here's another variation of that play that we like. They're running all hitches. Um, but we're going to run quarterback 
power quarterback long trap. He sees it's a three, one box and it's like, all right, we're just going to take off and get the first down. Like, great. These guys were the guys that ended up just saying, we're going to play cover one against you. And all of our guys were dead by that time we we're injured. Um, so here's all hitches against us. We got out of the all hitches thing a little bit more. This is actually a really good cut up here of, um, of running back footwork counter. We jab opposite when we're going counter. So, um, it just times up better. Let's him hit his aiming point better, but it doesn't change the quarterback. Cause look at where his feet are. Hey, look at where his eyes are. Okay. He's reading anything going on out here. That's really good. Okay. And just a little bit of here. I wish he would pretend to throw the ball. That's what he was taught. And he got good. So he, he thinks he might have the answer. So, um, stick, I'm not going to get into these too much because it's the same thing. If it's three, we're going to read three on these concepts. Um, it just depends on what two is doing. Like, okay, well, two's kind of muddying it up a little bit and we're sending him on the trigger or they're rolling. All right, well, then we're going to get two out of here and make him and, and make him isolate it up a little bit. We can throw it to two. All right. He's really kind of just reading three to two, but again, we don't want to give him too many options. All right. He's just going to pull it, throw it. Um, and, and two, we're out there a little bit. He's reading his wristband a little bit late. Quick out. Great. Great for soft coverage, great for quarters, okay? And again, I know, uh, I think I had this clip on here earlier. Um, yeah, it's one of my favorite clips, though. It's good. But again, what it does on this play is it forces their forced player to turn his back to the sideline. Like, that's that's really good for us. So um, that, that's a fun cut up. So here's us throwing into it. Again, this team is a big quarters team um, in the state final four a couple years ago. Um, he pulls it off a split flow action and throws the ball out to the perimeter. That's really good too. Um, I got the Baylor, these Baylor clips on here just because it, it really shows what it, it, it's good. So these guys are just running quarters into the boundary here. Um, you know, this is just straight quarters. I don't even think it's palms just judging by it, but He's kind of slow. He's kind of slow. If we just run this guy in a hitch or a now, he's going to break on it. But if we really throw this guy out here to the perimeter, now we're, now we're taking three yards, okay? Um, and here's another one, too, where they throw it into the boundary uh, or, or they run it. But if you look at it, okay, now they really have to, you know, they have to respect this more space. Like, that's difficult to, that's difficult to take. That's a lot of it, Okay. Search is a good one. Um, we're going to read number two on that one or number three. And, um, hey, we've run so much stick. We've run so much hitch. Now we're going to run right by him and try to make it look like we're going to the safety. And we're going to we're gonna attack the grass. So throws a bad ball here. Almost gets a little guy banged up pretty good. But um, that's a really good read. This is actually the play before um, that he ran it. And he could bend it. I wish Shawnee would have bend it this one in here a little bit more, but he was so tight because we were into the boundary almost with it. So, um, not really, but we, if we were a little bit wider, um, he could have probably bent it in there a little bit more. Um, but that safety was really quick. So he was probably trying to stay away from him. Here's a good cut up of it. Again, I'm not going to run this off an off secure edge. This is outside zone away. Uh, I got it on our teach tape. We're not going to ever do something like this. We're going to, we're going to throw it vertically and leave this guy untouched, but it's a perfect route. Like, there's slow playing, slow playing. He's going to run and just bend to the most grass. Okay. Run fast, get to grass and attack it. Okay. Pop is the same thing. Um, we're going to attack the box here. We haven't really run any of that stuff. This is, um, you know, this is some old Baylor stuff, you know, that's really good. But again, it, it's now going it, to, it takes that guy out of the run play. And now all of a sudden this is becoming a five man box that you're running the ball to and you're running, dart into it and that's a really good that's a really good matchup you flip the math good job um so here's a good cut up of it that guy is negated because he's got a wall and carry it wall or carry it and all of a sudden the math is flipped again now they're coming off the edge which is fine but when you run the ball inside like that you know vertical run game and you go fast it, it works all right, so the last thing I'm going to give you guys here, um, thank you for bearing with me. And again, if you guys have questions um, at the end of this thing, I don't have a slide on here with my contact information, but I will be happy to give that. And I love talking ball if anybody wants to talk. Um, so this is our choice stuff. There's safety read stuff. 
we could run a deep side, uh, deep backside choice route um, where he can take it pretty much anywhere he wants. Um, he can post it. He can sit. He can run a go. Um, he can stay skinny on it. We have different rules for the coverages and stuff, but it's it's really kind of just read and react. Hitch and go is like, all right, we don't trust giving you too many options yet. So we're either going to let you take it deep or sit down um, because some guys we just can't give too many options to. Um, and then skinny is if we tag on a hard, hard skinny, um, it's not a true over the top post. We can go on a true over the top post, but we'll hit a play action pass. So we don't get downfield on that if we want. All right. So, um, this first one here, this team gets down to cover zero. All right. So here's your four, four look. Okay. Now they were a four, two, five quarters team. These, these guys were a true quarters team here. Okay. But they've inverted down. This is the safety. So we're reading him. So I'm standing like right here and I'm telling Kyle, I'm like, it's zero, it's zero, it's zero. Basically telling him you're going to get the ball, um, but understand that it's cover zero. And we see this great, wonderful area of open grass. Okay. So they actually run a nice stunt here. Okay. So uh, they sw- they run a nice little, a little switch stunt and bring one um, and bring them off the edge here. And they actually, we, we screw it up sorting through and they do get a good hit on our quarterback here. Um, but he does a good job of pulling it, stemming it, and then running to grass. And he takes it and he's gone. Like, so just to put the concept in your head of what we're doing here. Okay. This is backyard football. Okay. If we can't throw this, I don't know, 12 yard, 15 yard pass, you know, then we we're not good. Okay. So trust your quarterback to do this. It's just drilling him. Okay. You can do really whatever you want if you teach it right. And if you you get your kids in a position, okay. I I can tell you right, right now, our kids are really, really good. All right. They're not the best athletes, but they're really good football players. We could not run the triple option. Likewise, my kids who are running the triple option could not run spread because they just weren't conditioned to do it. They didn't get enough reps at it. Okay. So, but we're reading that safety. They made it easy because that safety's already down. Remember how I already told you um, that we do it, um, that we see so much one high or loaded boxes to it. All right. So this is one of my favorite ones here. Okay. So we, we scatter here. Okay. So this is, this is just a, a shift. This is a predetermined deal. We were going to design to break their strength rules. They're trying to figure it out. They got guys going all over the place. Little do they know that we're just going to try to hit this one-on-one. So we're just running inside zone here. All right. Um, he's running a deep, just a choice route back there. He takes it deep and beats this guy. And it was great because he was, this guy was yapping a little bit the play before. So, you know, if, if you're, if you're going to be that guy that's going to talk, we will find you. Okay. We will find you and we will exploit you. And that's just, um, then all of a sudden you can't talk anymore because you've gotten beat. You're off your game. Like that's, you know, that, that's a matchup we don't have to worry about. Um, so again, here's another look at that safety read stuff. Um, this was a couple years ago against that team. Um, they do have a middle of the field safety here on this play. Um, or no, they don't again. I'm sorry, but yeah, we hit it. We wanted to attack that grass and we just missed it. Um, but again, yeah, their safety's down. We know we're pulling it. Uh, does a really nice job selling the ride, getting his feet right. Now, again, our feet are a little bit different and, um, I got some cutups a little bit here. Here is this in the state championship game. Um, so this was our middle linebacker. We put him at running back. He played offensive tackle for us, but he also played running back and he also played quarterback for us. I'll let you figure that one out. Um, but that's just what we had to do to be successful that year. All right. Um, but we're just running split flow action. Okay. We got a backside safety route here to the big guy, but he's just going to block and, and it turns into an explosive play, uh, because they had to play us a little bit, you know, they, they had to play our RPOs. Okay. So this is, um, not a great route. Okay. So we're reading him. All right. They're bringing another guy off the edge here to the field. So field off the edge with the middle linebacker. That's like one of the biggest things we see from our teams is field middle linebacker off the edge. I haven't figured out why. So you got this guy over here who's the down, he's the fitter, but they're fitting to the back. So like, this is a no brainer. Um, so he's going to take this to the grass because he's got outside leverage. 
Um, I wish he would have been a little bit flatter on that. Um, but he makes a good play nonetheless. He gets some positive yards on it, too. It was a good job by Shawnee there. Um, so here was later in the game. We just presented it differently. Okay. But we still wanted to attack the safeties. Okay. And he comes down to the box. And it's the same team from the year before that we saw did the same thing. Now, their safety's just sitting there waiting on it. But VC does a really good job. And this is our seventh wide receiver. Great kid, just not really fast. But understands the concept of I'm wide open. All right. Now, this corner bails out. But there's no – look at all the space. You know, we tell him to attack the midpoint of the grass, okay? And if I'm going to draw constraints between him and draw the midpoint that bisects it, yeah, we're pretty good on that path, all right? I mean, he could take his path, again, just about anywhere he wants to, but uh, that's, that's pretty good there, you know, getting the grass. Bobbled it a little bit for me. Um, so this is an example of bad, okay? So – Really, really bad here. We we had control of this game. We were pounding this team on the run game in the second half. They they had no answers to it. They were trying to load the box up. We have everything we want, but you have to be able to run good routes. We don't really run a good route. Okay. He doesn't flatten and allows this kid, who's a good player, okay, he's a good player, to jump in front and he picks it off. Okay. So yeah, scheme is good, but you need to be good on fundamentals. Because look at this. Like, if we run this right and flat and, and hit that midpoint of that bisect we were talking about, good. Look at all this grass up here. He catches it, and that's a 185-pound kid who's a D1 athlete, baseball kid. All right, we're gone. We're gone. We walk into the end zone, and at that point, the game is 26 to 8 or whatever, 33 to 8. It's over, you know. Now we had to linger around a little bit, and it was 26-16 with those guys. Um, so here's the pros doing it to make it look good. Okay. This is just power. They roll down, uh, they roll down to the twin side here to one high coverage. Okay. And this is just really easy. Okay. Yeah. There's no overhang player. Okay. Just run to the grass and bend it into the grass. It's really easy. Okay. Um, here's another one too. So safety read. We're going to read this guy. That's cute. It's a nice little bluff. Okay, his eyes are outside. Usually, usually if their eyes are outside and they're inside here, it's the same thing with the kid from Clarence. He's probably coming. Okay. Um, but at the end of the day, because if you split correctly, you can disguise all you want, but it's not going to really matter. Okay. Um, because you're not going to get to where you want to be in time. Okay. It's Corey Coleman. He's a good player a couple years ago. I did not coach at Baylor, by the way. Just, I, it's on our teach tape because, you know, that's what we did. So, Here's another choice on the backside. The safety comes down. They bring him off the edge. Um, he just stays skinny with it, you know, and that's fine too. It doesn't have to turn into a post. Could have, um, but they just kind of send it right up the seam there too. Um, you know, so um, motion stuff, you know, you could do some different things with that. I, I won't get into that because I don't have a lot of good film on it because we just don't do it a lot. Um, you know, so yeah, here's an old bubble cut up we had on here because we liked it or a quick one to the perimeter. So yeah, they're, they, they're showing games and they're trying to play games, but um, you can't, you can't hide from RPOs is kind of the point here. Okay. Um, if your spacing and your splits are good, this is really good. We're splitting the difference from the sideline. All right. We're top of the numbers into the boundary. We're running split zone here. This kid, this is awesome. Okay. That is old school. Look at his head inside too. Like that's just, that's awesome. All right. We're just running a switch out to the perimeter. All right. So the point I have with, with this whole thing is if we, if you do your job and execute, okay. Um, and you drill it and you want to get into it, it's very doable. You know, again, we built it, we built this thing from scratch. We've read some books. We didn't really like them. We've read some drill things. Um, we really, kind of like them, but we, at the end of the day, wanted to build a system that was unique, um, that fit our rules. Okay. We weren't going to try to do things that, uh, um, that weren't going to work for us. And, and that's kind of the biggest thing I think, uh, 
I think that you guys need to um, understand is you need to be able to do what your kids can do. Um, and you need to be able to coach it. Okay. But when you put in the time and effort, your kids will get it. Okay. Um, you know, cause I've had coaches my whole career and it's, you know, 12 years in right now saying, Oh, you know, you can't do that. Or, Oh, you're too complicated or, you know, and, and really you're not. Um, it just might be more complicated for them, you know, but it's, um, you know, yeah, we can get that done. We can, we can run that screenplay. We just need to wrap it. We need to, we need to trust to rely on our techniques. So, um, that's all I have. If you need to get a hold of me or want to get a hold of me again, we're Lancaster high school outside of Buffalo, New York. Uh, my email is s bruso 102 at gmail.com. That's s bruso 102 at gmail.com. Um, my Twitter is at bruso. That's B R U S O at bruso 102. So if you want to follow me, if you want to send me a DM, if you want to send me an email and, and you want to learn a little bit more about what we do, if you want to get some of this presentation to you, we'd be uh, more than happy to, to do it. So uh, thank you all for, um, thank you all for joining us here tonight.